Good morning. Waking up. That's all good. No, no better way than to wake up with some movement and some breath. Um, as you know, I am more and more leaning towards teaching a little bit of the fluid style, which I am doing the teacher's training about with Carlos and Devon, who are in the, in the village as well. And, and certain experiences are really hard to put into words. You know, when you, when you do something and the other person wasn't there, you like try a little bit clumsy to explain what the experience was about. Um, and I find it very much um, like that when it comes to fluidus, specifically because it's such an inner experience. And inner experience are individual. You know, so it's something that you feel on the inside. So the invitation this morning is to feel, is to feel and to spend an hour of time um, with you, with your inner inner landscape. And with Fluidus as well, we encourage to allow yourself to come to that edge of the unknown, the mystery, the beauty, the poetry, um, rather than the intellect. Really just feel into... If you start to think about, like, look outside in the wonder of this world, very quickly you can't grasp it anymore. It's just too beautiful. So you, we almost limit ourselves and go, like, well, let's just intellectualize it, put it in a box, because then we can at least understand it. Otherwise, it just becomes a little bit too big. But let it be big, because we are living an incredible, incredible, on an incredible planet, uh, in an incredible life, and you also... Your body is just incredibly intelligent. So let's close our eyes. And just sit still for a moment. Breathe deeply and slowly. By closing the eyes, we pass a threshold to a, a different place, a different state of being. An appropriate state of being where we notice more. We ask ourselves to notice more, to feel more. Take a deep breath in together, fill up, and a nice breath out. Another nice deep breath in. And now hold the breath and take another sip of air inside. Fill up a little bit more and a little bit more and then hold. That the air kind of floats into the cave of your skull. And then breathe everything out. One more like that. Breathe in. And then sip in a little bit more air. And a little bit more. And maybe a little bit more. And hold. And then let it go. Now, when we close our eyes, with the ritual of closing our eyes, we take the outer world away. We can feel the outer world. We can feel the people in the space. But we turn our gaze inwards. Stay with your natural breath. And 
And then you may place your hands in front of the heart if that's something you enjoy. Rituals and ceremonies and all of that, it's personal. So there's just instructions. And if you enjoy them, you add them. And if you don't, you just do your own thing. Moment for me of gratitude for a new day that we're healthy. And that we have time to move and breathe and take care of ourselves. And open your eyes and create a fist with your left hand. Now, one of the principles of fluidus is the pressure and the tension that you use. So squeeze and feel that you can move your wrist, relax your elbow. And then you can move that tension, maybe release it a little bit. So we're not squeezing, but we're also not totally relaxed. So you can even feel that if you move your fingers, there's a sort of, it's like an octopus. <laughs> it's all connected. And then that movement can start to move up towards your elbow and letting go of how it looks, but really feel like you're coming closer to the bones. So it's not the outer muscles that are holding the shape. It's almost like your bones are floating and let that come up towards your elbow and then maybe even up towards your shoulder. Notice that if you reach that now your body can start to come with your hand like a wave. Feel the tension, appropriate tension in the arm and then relax. Take a breath into the center. Notice the sensations in your left and right arm. And then do the same on the other side. So start with a nice squeeze. If you've got nails, <laughs> just be careful. And so it's quite strong in the beginning. So the outer layers are strong. And just feel how that feels. Into the joints. And then you let go of the outer layers and start to feel uh, an appropriate tension. So there's not, it's not total relaxation. But it's also not an, an outer squeeze. It's like everything is integrated and connected. And then you can do that with your breath. It's almost like an inhale, like a wave. Another metaphor or image is kelp, kelp in the sea. Just moves with the water, with the right amount of energy, and just being, being moved almost. And we will apply that with our breath. So it becomes more and more of an inner world experience. Two more rounds of breath. And place your hand back onto the side and close your eyes for a moment. And you can crush your legs with a little bit tighter. So they're a little bit in front of you and start to lean backwards. Broad, so rather than being rounded, you try to lengthen the front of the belly and then soften your sternum in. So you can feel this spaciousness and you breathe all the way down to the pelvis, to the back, to the front, if you can. For a moment, you're just still. And then you let your breath take you to places. So take a soft breath in. And then you gather your sacrum and your heart in for an exhale. And now inhale to come forward. It's almost like your breath is taking you forward. And then the breath is taking you back. I find it way easier to do all of this with my eyes closed. But and, it's, and I don't even really at the moment need to look at you because I know that you're safe. And there is no wrong or right here. It's you feeling the breath. It's almost like the breath is slingshotting you forward and then waving you back. So it might also mean that you're moving faster or slower than I am because you're moving with your breath. Two more rounds of breath. 
really letting your body follow the breath. And come over your shins, onto your hands and your knees. Now in fluidus, we use baby hands. If you ever Google a, a baby, so we're really going back to the primal, the first kind of fascial lines that, that have changed over time. And just so there's a, uh, we use the moons of your hands and also the moons of your feet, which is from the second toe to the outer line. So we're really using the outer lines of our body in our fluidus methods. I can't go into all of the technique, but I will slowly, slowly take you on the journey. Feel free that if anything doesn't feel right, to just go to a place that feels good to you. And then you can hover your hips and open your sit bones. Open your sit bones and then you breathe in. Come forward, breathe out, wave back. Same principle. It's almost like you're waiting for it. The breath arrives and then brings you all the way forward. And then all the way back. Elbows stay soft. Feel free to close your eyes here. Maybe you go a little bit more towards the right hand. A little bit more towards the left hand. That's it. Couple more rounds of breath here. Good, downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift your sit bones, lift your hips. Hmm, yum, yum, yum. Best thing to do on a Monday morning, to move, to connect, to feel. If at any stage you want to just rest and kneel and be, feel free to do so. Bend your knees and look forward and walk your feet all the way to the top of the mats. Feet are hip width apart and toes can point slightly in. And let your head hang heavy. And then bring more weight toward your toes and the balls of the feet so the heels become quite light. Keep your knees bent and press into the outer arches of your feet. So the inner ankles start to lift. We're using the inner fountain, as we call it. So bring your hands to the inside of your ankles. And then while you reach up, you bring your fingertips on the inside of the ankles, the inside of the knees, all the way up. And that is your inner fountain bringing you up to the sky. Bend your knees, knees forward, hips back. And you can wrap your thighs a little in while you fold forward. We do that again. Inhale. I even touch the floor. And it's like there's like a sucking up through center all the way up. Thighs can roll in, hips back, knees forward, soften all the way back down. Two more rounds like that. So feel how you lift your inner ankles, you lift the knees, you almost suck the air, you're breathing all the way up. It's like you're bringing energy from the earth through the feet and all the way up to the sky. One more time, inhale. Let the breath carry you all the way up. Knees forward, hips back, and then fold all the way forward. Fly your arms to the side and then hands down, feet to the back of the mats. We're back into downward facing dog. Sun salutations, fluid as style. So come forward, your knees are bent. It's almost like you want to wait for the knees to touch the floor. So you're not bringing them down. As you come down, it's like, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, yet. Okay, there's the knees. And then press your hips back so you lift your tummy bring your hips towards your heels hands to heart center exhale inhale open the heart to fly like you're sling slingshotting the body and but gently exhale hands down hips back round your spine forward inhale tuck toes lift hips up to the sky exhale inhale bend your knees and look forward Step, jump, float to the top of the mat, feet hip-width apart. 
Fly your arms, feel how your legs are bent and you're just waving yourself up and then all the way up. Breathe in. Hips forward, knee, knees forward, hips back all the way down. Warming up, connecting breath and movement. Inhale, fly your wings. Exhale, melt down, hands to the top, feet to the back of the mat. Downward facing dog. Shift the weight forward, knees are bent. Wait for the knees to touch the floor almost simultaneously with your chest. Now, I personally like to slide my knees in here, lift my tummy, I even lift my feet. So I'm floating on the chest and the knees, very much connected to the core. Elbows in towards your waist, and then press your hips back towards your heels, tuck toes. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, up and open. And now here, feel that tension. Same way, we can even go a little bit to the right and the left. You feel that appropriate tension. So the, even the fingers might look a bit weird. And then exhale, come down. And we'll play with that a little bit. So bring your right hand down to the floor. Now elephant trunk, your left arm. So you can compare it to sailing. There's a, there's a little bit of wind coming, like... Kite surfing, for example, Mr. Rick. <laughs> and then there's a bit of wind and you go like, okay, up with the wind into the sail. Exhale, come back with your hips to the center, other side. So you wait for it, left hand down, right on the elephant trunk. And then feel that the wind is coming up into that right sail. Hips come up, all the way up, breathe in and come back to center. Right hand down. Now, if you press your right knee into the floor, you can hug your ribs more in. So there's a shortening on the one side and it creates space on the inhale. Exhale, come down. The intensity comes from the breath. Feel it, breathe in. And now hold and let a little bit more wind come into that right sail. Reach and breathe and reach and breathe. Pull the <clears throat> left waist in by pressing the left knee down. And come back to center. We'll do one more time on the other side. Feel the wind arrive. Inhale. So it's really breath orientated. And this time you hold. Hold, hold, hold. Hips are a little bit back. Yes. Up and over and breathe into the side body. Into the center. Create your fists. Both at the same time, very, very strong to so kind of feeling the tension, hands to heart center, and then the tension comes open, 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 hips back, hands down towards the floor. Well done. Inhale, roll forward, tap toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Three rounds of breath here. Inhale, bend your knees and look forward. Exhale, step or jump to the top of the mat. Fly your arms, breathe in. Melt everything down, breathe out. Inhale to rise, feel the inner ankles lift, inner knees lift, arms come up to the sky. And then for a moment, just let your arms be next to the body. And take a moment to check in. And then bring your feet a little bit wider and hold on to your thighs. You can even take one thigh and rotate it a little bit inwards. And you're pressing into the outer feet, second toe, and that radiates into a support from your hips. Good. And a bit of a buoyancy here. Shift the weight towards your right foot. Heart is in front of the hips and lift your left knee. But you're also leaning towards the leg. Good. Come back. Buoyancy, buoyancy, shift the weight and then lift up. Nice. Back down one more time each side. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Hands to heart center. 
Open to fly, breathe in. So the knees stay bent. The knees are forward and the bum is back. The heart is open. The belly button is up and in. Fold forward, wrap in, relax neck, head and shoulders. Inhale, fly your wings. Nice, guys. Exhale, left foot steps to the back, back of the mat. Flatten the back heel and rise up into a warrior two stance. Spaciousness. So the biggest difference probably from how I used to teach is that the back knee is slightly bent. So you can move. And rather than tucking the tailbone under, we keep the bum spacious and almost backwards. Like you want to show your bum. We call it a social bum. Social bum. So if you would be on your surfboard here, you can catch a wave anytime. You're ready, right? Well, if you, I'm not saying it's wrong, but here it's a little bit more close, less energy in the joints, using the integrity of the body, the connection of the body. Breathe here for a couple of moments. And bring your hands to your waist. Now try to breathe towards your hands. So you can feel the breath underneath your hands. And when we exhale, rather than emptying completely, you actually keep a little bit of air inside the body. So there's a, a living balloon inside your body, which creates appropriate pressure in the body. Nice, arms come back wide, take a deep breath in and let your right elbow softly land onto the thigh. Now notice that you can even use that back leg for your elephant trunk here. So everything is connected and then catch a little bit of wind, breathe in and lift up and over. We're looking down and now point your right knee forward and hug your waist in. Take another three rounds of breath here. So here is where we can make it strong and intense by going to the edge. But water is strong by being fluid, by being adaptable, not necessarily by forcing things. Nice work. Take another deep breath in here. Come all the way over to the left into your pressurita. So turn your toes in. Take a moment. Invitation to keep your knees bent. And your heels light. Let your shoulders drop. Let your head be heavy. Inhale. Take a halfway lift. You can even wing your arms if that feels nice. Exhale. Walk your feet or your hands, that would be, to the top of the mat. Rise to a crescent lunge. Again, notice that you can just catch a wave anytime. You might have to bring your feet a little bit wider. And the thighs wrap in. Nice. Open the arms to fly. So how can I explain this? You keep your sit bones broad. So there's no tucking of your tailbone. You can only do that if the knee is bent. The knee reaches down and the lower belly lifts up. Take a deep breath in and gather your hands back to heart center. Inhale, exhale, one more time, breathe in, feel that tension. You're moving from the back of the heart, exhale. Hands to heart center, take a breath in. Mercury, shift your weight forward and find a moment of balance. Your left knee is bent and your left thigh internally rotates. If you need your hands on the floor, feel free to do so. Focusing your eyes on one point will help you balance. Whoopa. The wobbling of the feet lifts the inner ankle. Take one more deep breath in here. Cross your left foot behind your right foot and just take a moment here. Option to bend the knees and walk your hands over towards the left, uh, no, excuse me, your right side. Your right side, let your head hang heavy. And can you breathe into that left wing, into the left armpit, reaching the left armpit away from the left hip. So in your mind, you can even rotate your hips 
a little bit in an anti-clockwise direction. It means that your left hip is reaching away from your left armpit. Come back to center, take a breath in, a little lift of the chest, release the feet, hip width apart, or even a little bit wider. Inhale, wing the arms. Exhale, soften everything down. Lift your inner fountain, inner heels, inner knees, all the way up to the sky. We keep moving, knees forward, hips back, fold all the way forward. Inhale, wing your arms, wide. Exhale, step the right foot to the back of the mat. Nice, guys. Right heel down. Feel already that you're fluid here, that there's space. Lift that inner ankle so you can press into the outside of the feet. And I take a moment here to just feel and pretend I might be on that surfboard. Can I catch a wave or am I rigid here? Yeah, using all the parts of your body to move as one. And then stop if you want to, and then let the breath be there for you. Left elbow to left thigh, and then feel how you can elephant trunk that arm. You're waiting for a little bit of wind, it means that you're waiting for your own breath. Waiting for your own breath, and then you take a deep breath in, keep looking down and feel that you can reach your right hip away from your right armpit. While you reach your left knee forward, the left ribs can hug in, the left part of your heart can hug in. Breathe into that side line of the body, breathe into your connective tissues. The fluidus method is a different way of looking at the body, not from a bone, muscle structure, but from a fascial point of view, lymphatic. Okay, one more deep breath in. Where can you find that edge rainbow, that right side of the body? And then come all the way over to the right into your pressurita. Relax for a moment. Knees are bent. Hug the lower belly in. And let your shoulders and head hang away from the body. You root to rise and you can wing your arms, halfway lift, breathe in. Walk back to the top of the mat, hands frame the foot, lift your back foot. Uh, top of the mat, my side. Yeah, that's it. Rise, crescent lunge. Take a moment to find your feet. So the cues are always the same. Inner ankles lift, inner knees lift, lower tummy lift. Sit bones stay broad, the chest or the heart almost hugs back in. And then from that place, you find an appropriate amount of tension to open up. So one side is not pressing or contracting the other side. It's all connected. Breathe in like a big balloon. Your whole body is breathing in and the whole body is breathing out. One more time. Breathe in. Feel that your wrists, like your Spider-Man, are reaching backwards. Exhale, hands to heart. Prepare to fly. Breathe in, wade into the left foot. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, I can't look at you. Need to look at my own little dristy here. One more deep breath in, yogis. Right foot slides behind the left. At the moment to just find the feet, relax your chest down, knees are bent. Yeah, nice. If you want to use a block rack, you can, just so your hands can rest on something. And then you can bring the block over towards the left side or your fingertips over towards the left side. Check in with your head. Can you shake a no with the head or a yes? Let the brain relax and then breathe. Hello, body. Hello, deeper, deeper layers of myself. And sometimes the deeper layers are not easy to talk to. They tell you the truth. Your body tells you the truth. The mind can be a little bit deceptive, but it's an important part of our being as well. It protects us. It warns us. 
it digests life. It's all part of being human. Come back to the front a little left and then bring your feet back to hip with a part. Soften down. Bend the knees. Inhale, lift halfway, fly your wings open. Exhale, melt all the way down. Root to rise. Feel the inner ankles lift. You're bringing the energy of the earth up towards the heavens. Thighs wrap in, knees forward, hips back, fold forward. Wing your arms, inhale, downward dog, hands to the top, feet to the back of the mat. Come forward, knees are the last, almost last, 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 last thing to touch. Exhale down. Slight knee forward, feet can lift up. Now think about pressing your hips towards your heels. One, two, backwards, backwards, backwards. Yeah, so the big difference here is we're not pushing up. We're not pushing our body up to the sky. We're pushing our body backwards towards our heels. Let's try that again. So let's come into downward facing dog. And then come forward. Knees are bent, elbows are bent, and then slowly with control, bring the body down. If you want, you can slide your knees a little in. So there's a lifting of the tummy and a connection there. All right, feet can lift. It can help from a biomechanical point of view. Take a deep breath, sink back. So heels are to the floor. You can even bring them down. Or let your sit bones kiss your heels. Backwards, backwards. Yeah, no, it's hard. It's actually really hard. It looks easier than it is. Okay, roll the spine forwards. Because it's new to the body, come all the way back to downward facing dog. You, I'm sweating. It's nice. Take a breath in here and a breath out. And slowly bring the knees to the floor. Sit bones widen while you sit down. Bring your hands to the thighs and just take a pause to feel your breath, to feel more awake, to feel whatever you're feeling. Nice. Bring your hands back to the top of the mat. Tuck your toes. Lift your hips. Baby hands. I like to walk onto my baby hands, really feeling the outer layers. Now, can you feel if you press? The hands are soft. That's the weird thing. So the inner layers of the body are strong. Can you feel the connection of your outer hand past your elbow, past the upper arm, to the shoulder blade? It's all connected, actually connected all the way to the back of the heart. So you're moving from a place deeper, deeper inside yourself. The arms are an extension of an initiation of movement from the heart. Take a breath in, bend your knees and look forward. Slowly walk, step the feet to the top of the mat. We flow together, fluidity. Inhale, like the rivers inside you, the water, fold forwards. Inhale, rise to a standing position, all the way up, very nice. Thighs in, knees forward, hips back, fold all the way forward. Inhale, fly your wings open. Step your left foot to the back of the mat. Heel comes down, find your surface feet. So the right toes for me are a little bit turned in rather than in line with this long edge of the mat. And from there, I can press into the outer edges of the feet. Again, lifting up the inner ankles, arms come nice and wide. Ribs are in front of your hips rather than stacked above them. Lift your lower belly. It really feels like you're surfing on your yoga mat. Take a deep breath in and bring your right elbow down. Elephant trunk, catch the wind. 
When is the wind gonna come? Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. Your feet are even moving with the wind. When you catch that wind, there it comes. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Appropriate tension. Move. Even feel the fingers. They're soft, but there's a connection all inside the body from the and the hold it this time, moving the left shoulder, the left armpit away from the left hip. One more deep breath in. And then come all the way to Prasarita. Breathe out. Wing the arms. Inhale. Halfway lift. Back to the top of the mat. Low lunge. Straight into Mercury. So you lift up and you fly up. Hands can come to heart center or to a block. Nice. Can we slowly stand up? Bend the knees, bend the knees, bend the knees, bend the knees, bend the knees. Left knee in towards your chest, standing on your right leg. Let your left foot be soft. Hold on to your left sit bone with your, with your left hand and move it back. Physically move, drag it back, yes. While the knee is reaching forward, very nice. Bend your standing leg a little bit and then see if you can step your foot on top of the thigh. So rather than having it on the inside, we step the foot on the front of the thigh. Knees are bent. Sit bones reach back, knee is reaching forward. So there's always this appropriate tension in different directions. I wanna say two directions, because to me it feels more like two, but it's actually in all the directions. Keep your breath, maybe hands to waist. Breathe all the way down, use your full balloon. Take one more deep breath in here and then slide that left foot down and full. This time you walk your hands over towards the left side and let your head fall. If you've got hair or think about the crown of your head, let the crown of the head drape down. Mm, one of my favorites. From here, you come back to the center. You can keep your feet closed, crossed here. And um, I'm gonna walk a little bit backwards so I can move forward onto the mat. Cross-legged crow. So you can lift your heels. Now keep your ankles connected. There is a connection between the ankles. Hands come to the floor, baby hands. And then you bend your elbows so you can bring the armpits closer to the thighs. So you're crawling under your feet. Now the eyes, move them forward, start to shift away to the feet. The nice thing is you can just keep your left toe on the floor and the ankles are still crossed. From there, you start to keep the ankles crossed and slowly lift that other foot. Let's give it a try. So what helps yogis is to lift the heels and walk the toes a little bit in to face each other. So now the toes are pointing forward. But if I lift the heels and then walk your toes a little bit facing each other while the heels are lifted. So lift your heels and let your big toes look at each other. Yeah, that's it, that's it, Triella. Nice, nice, nice friend. Can you feel the connection of the ankles crossed? So the bones and the bones are touching. Hands can come to the floor. Bow down while the bum stays up. Then look forward. Then shift weight towards your hands. Take it easy. Take it slow. Good friend, that's it. That's it. Now bend your elbows and bring them under your thighs or towards your shins. Knees can even ballerina more towards the sides. Good, yeah, almost there, nice. All right, uncross the feet and bring them hip width apart. Fold forward and let your head hang. Yes, yes, yes. And then come to stillness. Three rounds of breath here. (sighs) 
hello inner world hello me hello my deeper thoughts my deeper feelings deeper layers of the body going into depth rather than staying at the superficial levels of life of your being rise halfway lift let's do a fly in between exhale hands down feet to the back of the mat down dog hips lift baby hands come forward let's practice breathe in it's a yoga practice come all the way to the tummy yeah there you go knee slide forward so the toes can either be on the floor or lifted up and the feet fall a little out to the side so you keep an inner rotation on the side are you ready take a deep breath in hips backwards exhale <sighs> yes inhale round the spine forward exhale round it back let's do three more here so when you round forward um rick and realize no really so keep your arms straight come back with your hips Keep your arms straight, but the elbows are slightly bent. And then you come forward, but the arms, they kind of, no, you see, when you come forward, Rick, you bend your elbows. So it's a up, like a cat. Yes, and then back down. Good, up, like a cat forward. And then think about your sit bones and let your sit bones go back first. So it's very much spinal movements forward into that cat and it's like your sit bones want to open and the rest of the body follows forward inhale think about your hips let your hips come towards your heels and that brings you out of the rest of the body one more time inhale good downward facing dog exhale last little bit of flow bend your knees and look forward step jump front to the top of the mat lovely feet have put apart wing your arms open exhale full press into your second toe the toe next to the big toe that's an anchor point and then let your index fingers pass your little toes past the outer edges of the feet to the outer that's your moon in the feet lift the inner ankles and rise press all the way up heels stay lift there we go knees forward hips back full halfway fly step your right foot to the back of the mat flatten the heel find your surface feet surface feet bum back and there you go rise up hmm Take a breath in here, left elbow down. So you're catching the wind, not just with your arm, but with your whole body. It's like, okay, breathe in, breathe out. And then the wind gets stronger. Inhale up and over, but the foundation sits in your feet. Exhale, come down. Two more like that, breathe in, breathe out new pathways new ways to move so just feel into what you are experiencing hold and then extend and let the space between the right hip and the right armpit arch 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 rainbow that side body now bring more breath towards that side breathe in exhale all the way to prasarita feel the feet bend the knees lighten the heels inhale wave your arms up exhale to the top of the mat frame the foot lift your back heel great mercury fly wobble go slowly follow each movement of each moment of this movement up yeah the slower you move actually the more challenging it is Find that standing leg slightly bent, right hand to the right sit bone. Two dimensional, the knee wants to reach forward while the sit bone is reaching back. Fantastic. Place that foot onto the thigh. 
Same. Knee is reaching forward. Sit bone is reaching back. Hands can come to heart. If you want to practice the living baroon breath, bring your hands to your waist. Oh, can't close my eyes here. <laughs> Need to keep the eyes open. One more deep breath in. So nice. Slide the foot down. Soft bend in the knee. And fold all the way forward. <sighs> Walk your hands or your block over towards the right side. Back to center, or if you want to try a cross-legged crow, I like to work on the mat. You can all, you can obviously work on the floor. So first, you lift your heels. The ankles stay crossed. Walk, walk, walk. Your toes to touch each other. So there's a ballerina kind of knees out of the side. Your elbows are going to come, or your arms are going to come under. So there's a bone-bone connection between the bicep and your shin. Hop, crawl under your legs, baby hands. The gaze is important because if you look down, boink, you're going to go down. So look forward, shift the weight. You can keep the right toe on the floor. Quite soft, actually. The ankles are soft. And then from here, you gently lift. You focus on that right foot. And the right foot lifts. It's like a lever, lever, I think you say in English. It just lifts up. From there, you can use the living balloon to come up, 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 and down. Good, give it a try. Riala, look more forward. Look more, mena fora kijka. Yeah, that, 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 that. Right, she needs to feel it herself. That's the thing, it comes from the inside. You can't let it, you can't let it have someone else with balance, hey? Great, all right, bring the feet hip with apart. And then slowly come to a kneeling position at the top of your mat. <sighs> now, your, your well being and health. First of all, lies in your brain. If you've got a sense of feeling safe and how you're feeling is the number one most important language of the body to tell you that you're okay and that you're safe. It's incredible. Number two is your lymphatic system. There's, a, there's the languages of the body. So I'd like to teach you daily maintenance when it comes to lymphatics. I know that Nicole will be very, very interested. Do you know what lymphatics are? The, the lymph, lymph nota. Uh, this is uh, your system, it helps with cleansing, taking toxins out of the system. So the, there's kind of eight languages of, of the body or, or landscapes of the body where the body tries to support. Number eight is actually muscular pain. It comes as a result of things underneath inside the body. For example, even if, of course, when you exercise, you can have a sore muscle. But if there's pain somewhere on a muscular level, it's often linked to an organ. It's an organ that is not, not always, but it's, it's, it sits deeper inside. So doing there, there are resets. I'm learning them. I'm very excited. So if you want me to ever do a full treatment on you, I can. I'm going to slowly move into that space because it's fascinating. But daily maintenance when it comes to uh, lymph is quite easy. It will take you five minutes. So the rivers of the lymph, they are in a certain direction in the body. I can show you pictures and whole slideshows if you're interested in it. But they're dams. So it's, it's really like rivers and then there's a dam. And if the dam is blocked, the river can't flow. And it's, there's three ways of stimulating your lymph. Movement, breath, and touch. And touch is subtle. 
So I can actually sh I'll share a link. I'll share the dams, a picture of the dams on the group, because it's not necessarily the way you touch; it's the order. Because if you start in the back of the river, it, you need to start in a certain order. And what is really nice here, you can sit in a way that works for you. This works for me, but maybe you want to sit cross-legged. When we do this, I invite you to, so you don't have, please, when we do it now, try not to remember what we're doing, because I'll, I'll send it to you. Try to experience the, the sense of touch. So just bring, find a comfortable seat and bring your index and middle finger to the dam above your left collarbone. So it's your right hand and start with a feather like touch. Feather like touch, just feel the skin and the dam above your left collarbone around three times. And then you can rub a little bit deeper. And then with a flat palm, five slaps. And then you sit still and take a moment. You can maybe feel a bit of a ripple effect of touch and then you go to the other side so your left hand finds the space above your right collarbone so this is the most important dam so even when you're having dinner or you're watching a movie you can always softly just come to this place don't overdo it though <laughs> just take it easy touching the deeper layers of your body you might feel it but it's subtle and it's because you do it on a daily basis or second, every second day, that it will have an impact. A little bit deeper. Now with lymphatic work, if you do this now for a week or whatever, you might even get a little bit sick. It's weird, you might actually get a release of toxins in your system that might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, but it's in order for it to flush out of your system five slaps. Dam number one, and then you bring your hands. This is the vagus nerve also here runs. So you can just massage uh, up and down these big cables of your neck and then find a place someone, somewhere behind your ear. Move and touch yourself with a sense of interest of like, hey, this is interesting. This feels soft. This feels bony. This feels tight. Maybe you can feel a difference between the right and the left. And then just find a, a place behind your ears and just hold it for a moment, almost like an acupuncture pressure point. And then five steps, relax your jaw and then bring your right hand here between, there's a ridge here. Again, soft, soft to start off with. Just feel your skin. So you can do this in the bed in the morning or while you're making tea around three times soft. And then let's say around three times a little bit deeper, you can feel the ribs and then five slaps. There we go. Skin on skin is beautiful. If you, if you can't, then you can also just bring your fingers onto your tissue to the other side. Left hand finds the ridge, soft touch to start off with, feather like curious fingertips and then a little bit deeper for a rub what do you feel hello what's under there what's under there with a sense of curiosity five slaps and then bring your hands on your sternum little circles Interesting, because we know these shapes, right? Intellectually, like a sternum and where the ribs kind of leave the sternum. You won't spend too much time here. You can even start to tap a little bit onto the sternum. And then come down. Just a space between where the ribs start and your belly button. Now, this place is quite sensitive. So start. To feather like for most people, this is also a point where it's actually the biggest point of lip. So your spleen sits here, your liver sits there. So when you softly press, 
kitchen. Sometimes when I do this, I, I feel a bit nauseous. Like, oh, it's right there. And then five, ten steps. Reverse, reverse, reverse down. And then we go down the legs. So you can come onto your back. And it's in the creases of the hip or even a little bit on the inside of the thigh here. Now here you have, for some people, there's quite clear lymph nodes. You can feel the little balls. And you can check in with those little, it's like a little pee. So when you feel a little off, and for women when it's the time of the month, when you feel these little peas, they might be bigger or smaller, which is an indication of where your immune system sits. So you can go and rub a little bit deeper, maybe close your eyes so it becomes, again, an inner experience. That outer will be five slaps on the groin. Lift your legs. Now you feel these cables. You can do this one. You can do one at a time. Let's actually do one at a time. We have a little bit of time. So you feel these cables of the tendons. Be a little bit more, if you go from behind the knee, be a little bit more towards your hamstring, but just a little bit so you're not in the middle. I actually like to place my one heel on the knee, then I can't really be digging in the center here. It comes in between those cables. Just have to remember to send you those pictures, but I'll do today because we're in training. It's part of the manual. Five slaps. And then the other side. So you can do this every day. Just go gentle. If you feel too much of an effect, too much of a cleansing, and you just want to take a break, take a break or one of the day or two, and then start again. So you don't want to immediately go too hard on your system. Five slaps. You can bring the ankle back onto the side. It doesn't matter which side. Just... I'll show you where it is. So it's like if this is your Achilles and this is that bony part, it's right there. And it's not one little, little, little place. It's around this area. So don't, don't worry that you're doing it wrong. So you might, if you do this every week, every day, daily maintenance, you might feel a little bit of a detoxification. Five slaps. And then there's deeper depth, uh, uh, deeper work. Organ resets. So I'd say the pillars are organs, lymph, and fascia. But it's all connected. All right, five slips. And then come into your back, lift your feet up off the floor. Now the knees are above the hips. The feet are lower than the knees. So the feet go lower than the knees. Notice how you need to have a little bit of tension here in the front of the body. And then you can scan. Where do you feel in contact with the floor? Start at your hips. Notice that the back of the hips are on the floor. Maybe your lower back is a little bit on the floor. Some will say yes, some will say no. The shoulder blade area. And then the neck is not probably not in touch with the floor. And then there's quite a strong connection between the back of the skull and your mat. Now lift your hands up softly as well, as zombie hands. You can stay here for a couple of rounds of breath as this is enough. Otherwise, you lift your shoulder blades. Can you feel the contact with the shoulder blades and your mat? A millimeter of the floor, just, just floating. And then you can feel that the back of the skull and the back of the pelvis, your sacrum, are actually holding you up. Well, what is holding you up is the appropriate tension of the body. The spine is kind of floating in between these two places. Now breathe, four rounds of breath. Maybe breathe all the way down towards your pelvis. One more deep breath in. Soften the shoulders back down and extend the legs along the floor for your final rest. Yogi's online. If you want to leave or if you want to take this time to journal, to meditate after your Shavasana, feel free to leave our, our Zoom.
meeting whenever you want. It is eight o'clock now. We'll do a short Shavasana. That's the thing. We, we're just building up some new things. So, you know, the time to explain. So if you are in a in a hurry online, feel free to go. And here in, in Scarborough, we'll finish like five minutes late. If you have to go, feel free. Otherwise, the final rest is very beneficial. Take a deep breath into your nose and a nice sigh. 
feel that connection with the inner world. Knowing that there is a beautiful world out there. Please start to, in your own way, we all have our own rituals. Stretch out, reach out, yawn, hug knees in, in a way to kind of go, okay, oh, we're coming to the end of the practice. It's time to transition from the one reality of you, your body, your mind, to sharing your energy again with the world out there with a whole full day ahead of you. It's going to be a beautiful one. So when you're ready in some way, maybe on the side, and then slowly come back up to a seated position, take your time. And I find that closing my eyes and focusing on the breath is one of those first nice rituals to go, okay, this is me. I'm still here. I'm connected. And during the day, you've got that. You can always just go, okay, I just want to close my eyes for a moment and breathe. See if I'm still connected with my inner world. Because the outer world can be demanding and distracting beautifully. <laughs> I wouldn't want the outer world not to exist. But we want to dance that dance of our inner world and the outer world. And staying connected. Grateful for this exploration of the unknown, the mythical, God, the divine, whatever words we clumsily try to sometimes put on these beautiful experiences. Grateful for community and support. And for this beautiful earth that we live on, Mother Earth, Pashavama, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day. Namaste. Thank you, guys. Thank you for waking up or before or on the mat. <laughs> I'll see you next Monday. Next Monday. I don't know how I'm going to teach next Monday because I will have just run 72 kilometers. It will be very quiet. Very quick. No, because I, I'm in Algin. Yeah. And I thought to do it on Wednesday instead, but I only... Finish it just.